Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jackie and today I'm here to do my September wrap up. So in the month of September I read a total of 18 books which is absolutely crazy. I had a crazy month with college starting back up so I didn't have a whole time ton, ton of time to sit down and read but managing to read 18 books that's pretty impressive in my opinion. So without further ado I'm just gonna jump right in and get started with the wrap up. So the first book I read in the month of September was City of Lost Souls by Cassandra Clare. This is book five in the Mortal Instruments series, which I have been reading for the past two and a half months. This is a series I have had a love-hate relationship with since the very beginning. I enjoyed the first three books for the most part, but these last couple of books I've had a lot of problems with, especially this fifth installment. This book, I did not like the plot, I did not like the characters, I did not like the romance, Pretty much everything that was important to this story I did not like. It was just very underwhelming. I found myself becoming extremely bored for the most part throughout almost the entire book. I don't think the plot really picked up until the very end of the book. So I ended up giving this book a 2 out of 5 stars. I originally gave it 3 stars but after thinking about it for a couple weeks that's why I lowered it to 2 stars. The next book I read in the month of September was Clockwork Princess, which is book three in the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare. This is a prequel series to the Mortal Instruments series, and I enjoyed this book so much. In my opinion, this series is ten times better than the Mortal Instruments series. I love this book, this or this series, I should say. This is, again, a prequel series to the Mortal Instruments, and it takes place in Victorian London, and it follows the ancestors of some of the characters we see in the Mortal Trent series, as well as the Dark Artifices trilogy. I think it's going to be a trilogy, correct me if I'm wrong. But this book, fantastic. I think, in my personal opinion, if you guys would like to read the Shadow Hunter Chronicles books, I would start with the Infernal Devices. In my personal opinion, that might just be me because I had a love hate relationship with the Mortal Instruments, but whatever. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars. The next book, and pardon me if I'm looking down a lot and looking at my iPad, it has all my Goodreads books on it. So the next, actually the next six books I read this month were all graphic novels and they were volumes two through seven of the Saga series by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. This is a series I started back in August and absolutely loved the first installment. So I definitely, can, I was like, the minute September started, I was like, I'm going to continue on with Saga if it's the last thing I do. And I'm so happy I did. I love this graphic novel series. This is an adult science fiction series that follows a young family who come, the mother and father come from opposing sides of the, this war that's going on. And they come together, they get married, and they have a child, and it follows them as they are trying to escape capture from the government who is pretty much trying to kill them. I love this series, like I said, I cannot recommend this enough. This is a popular graphic novel series here on booktube, and I can see why it definitely has a lot of elements going for it. I can see where the story is it's going to go from here in volume 8, which I believe comes out sometime next year. I'm so excited to continue on. Volume 2, I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Volume 3, I gave a 4 out of 5 stars as well. Volume 4, I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Volume 5, I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Volume 6, I gave a 4.5 out of 5 stars. In Volume 7, I gave a 5 out of 5 stars. Can't recommend it enough. The next book after I finish the saga books and trying to get out of a book hangover that I was having, I read the Peru's Utopia Book Club Book of the Month for the month of September, which was Gorilla. This is by Ashley Boston. This is one of my most anticipated releases of this year, and it did not let me down. I thought it was just as fantastic as I had been led up to believe from the first time I heard about it. This is a YA contemporary book that is a retelling of Cinderella. This follows two main characters. One of them is Elle, who is our Cinderella figure in this story. She has unfortunately just lost both of her parents, uh, and it follows her as she is living with her evil stepmother and her evil stepsisters. And she is a huge fan of this show called Starfield, which is kind of like Star Trek in a way. And she has a blog. She's just like one of the biggest fans in the world of this TV show. So it also follows our main character Darian who has been recast or just has been cast as the main character in the Starfield reboot and somehow him and Elle start connecting without knowing who each other is and it's absolutely fantastic. Yes it is very cheesy at times and yes I did find the plot kind of slow but I did really really enjoy it and I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. The next two books I read on or for this month I should say were both books that I had on my 
top 10 books I want to read in 2017 video. I'll have that video linked down below. So the first one I read was Red Queen by Victoria Aveyard. This is a book that has mixed reviews all over booktube and I can definitely see why it is a YA dystopian series that follows our main character Mare who is living in this society that is divided up by blood. You are either a red blood which means you have absolutely no powers or you are a silver blood which means you have some sort of magical ability that makes you kind of like a god in a way. Um, yeah, was this book was interesting. It had a lot of elements that I really enjoyed about it and there was a lot of elements that I really didn't enjoy about it. This is kind of a mashup of a lot of other YA fantasy novels. It had elements for me of Divergent in the Legend trilogy mixed into the plot of this book, which those are two series I'm huge fan of, but I don't know. This was too similar in those in some ways to those two series, so I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars. And the next book I read after that that was also on that TR video was The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. This is a book I have a very long history with, pretty much to make it short. I read this book back when it first came out in 2010-2009. I wasn't a huge fan of it at the time. I actually never finished it, but my brother was a huge fan of it. So we ended up going to see the movie adaptations. I have seen the first two movie adaptations, and I, it's been almost 10 years since this, the, this book came out. So I figured I'd spend time to give it another try. I'm so glad I did. I really did enjoy it. I'm pretty sure everybody's heard of this book. I'm don't really have to explain what it's about, but I give this book a 4 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was actually a reread for me, and if you guys have been following my channel since the very beginning, so over a year now, this was actually the very first book I reviewed here on booktube, as well as my blog, and that book is Grey by Pete Wentz. This is my favorite book of all time. It is the reason I joined booktube in the first place. This is an adult contemporary novel that is told from the perspective of Rockstar who's on tour away from family and friends and it's kind of what is going through his mind. This again is the reason I joined booktube. It's my favorite book of all time. It is very dark, it's very sad in some aspects, but I cannot recommend it enough. This is just amazing. It deals with a lot of things. It trigger warnings for suicide and depression. That's one of the main aspects of this book is dealing with those two elements, but it's just overall fantastic and I give it 5 out of 5 stars. The next one I read was Star Wars Ahsoka by E.K. Johnston. This is a Star Wars novel as it says right in the title and I loved this book so much. I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. I've explained that in a few videos before. I love Star Wars so and every time there is a Star Wars book on my radar I expected to be in my TBR or my wrap sometime that month. I absolutely love this book. Ahsoka Tano is the Padawan learner of Anakin Skywalker and who, if you guys have seen the Star Wars movies, spoiler warning if you have never seen Star Wars movies, this, she is the Padawan learner of Anakin Skywalker who becomes Darth Vader in Revenge of the Sith, my favorite movie. And you don't really see a lot of her in the actual Star Wars movies. She isn't a main character in the main seven movies but she does come into play in the Clone Wars movie and TV show which I also really love and highly recommend you guys check this out. But this book takes place actually between episodes three and four and this follows her as she is trying to adjust to normal life when she is kind of on the run from the Empire because all the Jedi have been wiped out at this point pretty much. So she is trying to adjust to normal life while evading capture so so good i believe this is considered middle grade i could be wrong on that i loved it gave it a four out of five stars just amazing and on the same uh, kind of line i also read star wars uh, labyrinth of evil which is a book that takes place between episodes three and four this is by james lucino i have had this t book on my radar for years now i first heard about it back when i started getting into star wars back in 2008 and this was one that at first I was confused by the plot when I first heard about it, but after reading it, I loved it. I love Revenge of the Sith. It's my favorite movie in the series. And this takes place pretty much maybe a week before the event of Revenge of the Sith takes place. This follows Anakin Skywalker as he kind of comes closer and closer to the dark side. Like I said, he turns in Revenge of the Sith to become the Darth Vader we all know. It's amazing. We have a lot of different viewpoints. We get 
viewpoints from Anakin Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, also some other council members of the Jedi Order and some of the senators. And you can tell, even if you have seen the Star Wars movies before reading this or yeah, before reading this book, you can tell there are elements that are from Revenge of the Sith that are hinted at in this book. And I think it was done really well. I gave this book a four out of five stars as well. The next book was one of my most anticipated releases of this year, and that's Because of You Love to Hate Me, by, and this is edited by Anne Marie. This is a collection of short stories that is written by 13 authors, and they were paired up with 13 booktubers. Like I said, this was my one of my most anticipated releases of this year, and I was extremely let down by this. I was not a huge fan of the short stories. I found myself getting more interested in the prompts that were written by the booktubers than I was in the actual short stories. And I explained this on my blog review, which I'll have linked down below, that I was confused. I liked the short stories, but I was confused on which villain they were about. Um, my favorites, that I, there was actually a few that I really liked. The one I enjoyed the most was by Marissa Meyer, which was based off the sea, which I think that was really, really great. But some the other ones, a good majority of them, I just found myself very, very confused about who they were about. So I ended up giving this book a three out of five stars. After that, I read The Throne of Fire, which is book two in the Kane, the Kane Chronicles trilogy by Rick Riordan. This is a series that follows Egyptian mythology. Rick Riordan is known as the author of the Percy Jackson series and the Heroes of Olympus series, which I have read and loved. And this is another series of his again false Egyptian mythology which I did not know a whole lot about going in but I loved it this book was a great sequel to the first book which is the Red Pyramid again really really enjoyed it I gave it a four out of five stars then after that I picked up the Pharaoh's Cat which is by Maria Louisa Lang this is a book that was sent to me for review by the author so thank you so much to the author for sending me this I did not know what to expect going in this is a I would say either middle grade or new it might be new adult I don't know for sure that follows a cat that is in ancient Egypt and he forms a bond with this pharaoh and it has elements of time travel it's definitely a fantasy novel the cat is able to talk so it's very interesting I was surprised about how much I enjoyed this book because again I didn't know what to expect going in I give this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I am going to continue on with the series. I own the second book, so really excited to see where the story goes from here. And then the last book I read this month was an audiobook, and that is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I'm sure you guys have heard this book going around on booktube since the day it came out. This is a YA borderline new adult book that follows our main character Monty, who is living in Victorian London, and he's about to go on this grand tour of Europe kind of as his last raw before he comes home to London and takes over his father's lordly duties. So he goes on this grand tour with his best friend Percy and his sister Felicity and they get into all kinds of mischief and it takes off from there. This is a great book. It made me laugh. It made me cry. I love this book. There is plenty of representation in this book. We have Monty who is bisexual. We also have Percy who is a biracial and he is also epileptic and we also have Felicity who is an asexual from what I have been led to believe. I loved it. The only problem with this book and I think I'm going to do a full review about this explain more in detail what my problem with it was this book is the epilepsy representation. Now keep in mind I don't know too much about how epilepsy was treated back in the Victorian era. Epilepsy is a condition I also happen to have myself so the whenever I hear about a book that has an epilepsy uh, incorporated into the story. I have very high expectations. This one, I don't think it was treated as well. But again, it could have been just the way I it was treated back in the Victorian era. And I did not know. But other than that, I really enjoyed this book. And I do highly recommend the audiobook and the physical book. So go check this out. And that is all I'm going to have for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you have not already. I'll be sure to have any videos mentioned in this video linked down below if you guys would like to check those out. I'll also have all my social media linked down below. As always, my Twitter, Instagram, Goodreads, and blog are all linked down below. And I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you soon for another video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye!